Hi. Maybe you've got numb hands. Maybe you think you've got carpal tunnel syndrome. And right now it's April 2020 and most doctors do not want to see people unless it's an emergency situation because they want to protect themselves as well. And in a way that's good news for you because this gives you a chance to find a way to fix yourself of carpal tunnel and things that resemble carpal tunnel syndrome. My name is Hilma Volk. I'm the founder of Carpal Tunnel Master, which is a program that's online. It's a series of videos, show and tell. And people say, well, why don't you just show us the exercise? Well, you have to figure out where your problem is coming from. Well, it's the carpal tunnel. Not necessarily. In fact, most of the time, the problem is not in the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel is a ditch made up of wrist bones and across the front of it is the carpal tunnel, transverse carpal tunnel ligament, which is what they split when you have surgery. But more often than not, that problem is caused by tight forearms. And very few doctors are going to feel your forearm for, for tightness or any other part of your body. And there are other things that mimic the problem. And these days, when uh, so many people, whether they're very young kids or even grandmas and grandpas and whatnots, are on their cell phone or their tablets or their laptops so much of the time. And it's a relatively new problem. And anytime you've got a screen and your keyboard right next to each other, you're going to have problems if you're doing a lot of it because you got to either have your hands in an awkward position or you're humped over. And yes, people have had forward neck problems f f for a long time if, if they are at an occupation where their head's down a lot or they're a bookworm. I've seen that and people have really been bookworm. Their, their head's stuck forward because uh, they really got their head down reading, but your head is stuck forward because your eyes want to look horizontally. And it's the same thing, only worse, with these small computing devices, whether it's a smartphone or, or a tablet or whatever, because you're hunched over. The keyboard and the, and the, and the screen are together. So there's no good ergonomic way to, to use it. Now, in the 80s, when computers <laughs> came on the, the market and businesses started using them, the carpal tunnel syndrome shot up among people who typed. Now, some of you have never seen a typewriter, but those who, who have, let me refresh your memory, when you use a typewriter, you had to put the paper in, you had to uh, turn the carriage, you had to type, and if you typed too fast, the keys would stick, and then you had to make corrections. And at first, you had to use a whiteout or correction fluid or, or eraser, and then the new things came up with the self-correcting tape. But you had to take the paper out, you had to put a new piece of paper in, you had to do something with the paper. When you're done with it, you either take it to your boss or put it in an outbox or file it. Now, there's nothing to stop you from typing as fast as you want. You, know, you make a mistake, you back up, or you put it in the wrong place, copy-paste, uh, and you go on. You want to send it to the printer, you print it, you want to file it, you just push a button and file it on your, in your computer or your network. It's non-stop. And people say repetitive use does not cause carpal tunnel. It can. Yes, it can. And it's worse when your hands are not in a straight line when you're texting. So if you're looking down your keyboard and your, your hands are at an angle or like this or that, uh, it's much worse because your tendons that go through the carpal tunnel have to go at an angle and anytime they're at an angle it puts more pressure on those tendons when they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'll just, I won't go into that now, but what moves your hands and fingers, the wrist and fingers, it's all forearm muscles. And it's not just texting, because if you're gripping things, well, yeah, that's not repetitive, but that's really using your forearm muscles. If you make a fist and then open your fist, but you've got the same uh, things going on, 
feel it. That's forearm muscles moving. You're, if you're gripping things like a motorcycle or uh, using weights and just gripping hard or you've got a jackhammer, that's one of the worst things. Uh, gripping. But it's not just gripping because that's forearm. Forearm causes more carpal tunnel things than anything else but there's things that mimic carpal tunnel and you got your cell phone people are not only doing their homework but then they're playing games on it or people are coming back home from a work where they're in a factory or they're landscaping or hairdressing or massaging I was a massage therapist for 23 years uh, many many occupations are a hazard for carpal tunnel syndrome as are other things that you may also be playing a musical instrument whether professionally or as a hobby uh, and weightlifting on the side or doing carpentry on the side or doing gardening on the side or knitting whatever all things help contribute to a problem if you're not correcting self-correcting with your posture and what you're doing with your hands and like I said, with the, with the head down, with uh, computers and cell phones, uh, the nerves that go into your hands come out from the back of your neck, go down the front of your neck, and when they go down the front of your neck, the front of your neck muscles, they're called the scalenes, they can pull up your, your second rib, first and second rib, that pinches off the nerves going down into your arm. It can also <laughs> block circulation into your arm. So then from there it goes under your armpit. And there's muscles here. <laughs> they're called the pectoralis minor. When they're tight, they can pinch on the nerves um, going into your hand. There's a, a muscle here uh, called the pronatus teres. That mimics carpal tunnel when it's tight. So uh, just addressing one exercise to do for carpal tunnel, I'll show you one right now. Uh, you can see it all the time in the internet. You, you know, just, you know what that does? That stretches your forearm. It's not just opening up your carpal tunnel. It's really important to figure out where your problem is coming from, and that's where my videos help. And people say, well, why don't you just show us an exercise? Most of what I do is not stretches. It is, first of all, I tell you how to find your problem, then I tell you how to fix each particular part that might be where the problem's coming from, and I do it mostly through massage that's either no hands, <laughs> using no hands, or minimal hands, and people go, massage, you know, that doesn't do any good. Well, it's very specific. You know, I was in massage school. And I've taken uh, courses on hand therapy uh, through c continuing education courses. Nowhere, nowhere did they teach the techniques that I show. And it's for self-use, not something somebody else does to you, not something that you have to go somewhere and have somebody do something to you. Because most people nowadays, unfortunately, want a passive approach. They want someone to do something to them or they want a pill. You know, people are not, some people are not willing to uh, eat nutritious food and exercise if, if they want to be healthy and lose weight. It's just a fact of nature, but my clients are the ones who say, I will not have carpal tunnel surgery. And here's the problem with carpal tunnel surgery. First of all, it does not address any of these other problems. So, uh, in chiropractic, they call it double crush if you have a, a vertebrae pinching on the nerve and carpal tunnel syndrome. Well, there could be multiple crushes from different places in your body. And if those aren't addressed, carpal tunnel surgery isn't going to do anything about those. Let me tell you what neurosurgeons call alternative <laughs> methods for carpal tunnel treatment. One, uh, cortisone shots. And cortisone is a very powerful anti-inflammatory and uh, it works usually. The trouble is it doesn't last. Uh, you might have the problem back again in two months, maybe even two years if you're lucky, but it does not last and 
The trouble is you can't keep having cortisone shots in the same place. Most doctors will never give more than two in the same place because it can deteriorate tissue, it can deteriorate tendons, it can deteriorate even bones, and it's absolutely not reversible. And the other thing they say is an alternative treatment is night splints. Well, night splints are great for helping you sleep at night, but they're not curing anything because they're passive. They're not actively reversing anything. They're just keeping your carpal tunnel open so you can sleep at night, so it's not flopping around when you're kind of unconscious like you're sleeping. So it's a great idea. It's not curing anything, and that's why neurosurgeons say they see it fail a lot because uh, <laughs> it's not really curing you. Uh, pills, there are no, <laughs> there is no pill that can cure carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, many doctors will prescribe anti-inflammatory drugs. They do not cure carpal tunnel syndrome. Never have, never will. In fact, knowledgeable doctors, there are knowledgeable doctors who know that they actually interfere with the healing process and they know they don't work. Neurosurgeons will call a surgery a success if the numbness goes away. It does not matter that it takes two weeks for you to heal or it maybe takes two months for you to heal from the surgery itself. It's a success if the numbness is going away and their failure rate of the numbness not going away is as much as 8 out of 100 or 9 out of 100 even uh, often with cases that uh, they've let go too far that could be a reason or <laughs> it was never carpal tunnel syndrome to begin with it might be more problems coming up here or from someplace else and there is a lot of inaccuracy in diagnosing carpal tunnel anyway. Nerve conductivity tests do have a lot of false positives and a lot of false negatives. And certain tests like the Fellines test or the Tingle test, uh, those are only 60% accurate. And really not a good diagnosis either because so often the tight forearm muscles are what's involved instead. Some people say my course costs a lot of money. Really? It's $47. I used to charge more than that for one massage. And that was just a general massage. If you, know, you say, well, I'll just get massages then. Well, you won't find one massage person out of probably 500 who knows anything about this stuff. It's just not taught in massage school. And it's not in their, what they're interested in. Why was I so involved? It's because I had the problem myself. I was working long hours as a massage therapist at a resort and I would start getting my hands numb and I would go home and I would bathe my arms, wrist to elbow, because I knew that the problem was more in the forearm than anything. I would do a cold bath, an ice bath, and then I would switch to a warm bath and then I switched to a cold bath again as long as I could take it. Eh. And I'm going, and this kept me working. And when I wasn't doing massage, I would take a bag of ice and, and uh, ice my forearm. And I'm thinking, there's got to be a better way. And I searched. This was back in the mid-90s, and nothing I looked at was very helpful. <laughs> I saw some stretches, and uh, they really weren't very helpful. Just a lot of talk on statistics of what kind of occupations get it and how big of a problem it is to the economy and all that stuff, but nothing really that helpful. So I developed my own techniques and then I posted some videos on YouTube about it and I got some really good responses. And back in 2010 I started uh, my own course and since then it's evolved because <laughs> <laughs> things have evolved too. Like the first Blackberry didn't come out till 1999 and uh, the first iPad, uh, the first smartphone, uh, 2007, the, the iPad which was the first tablet didn't come out to 2010 and old computers, you know, once uh, the manufacturers realizing that carpal tunnel was a problem, they, uh, my Hewlett Packard had a warning on it. 
and it had a website where you could look at ergonomic situations of how to set up your keyboard, how to set up your chair, how to set up, you know, your computer station, all that stuff. Uh, warning labels. There are no warning labels on your smartphone. There are no warning labels on your tablet or your, your laptop because they are ergonomic disasters, basically, but they're wonderful. There's more power, I've heard, in your smartphone, more computing power than there were that's in the computers that sent a man to the moon. So it's wonderful technology, but it's hurting people. They're getting text neck, which causes... Uh, it can not only cause pinching of your nerves and your and your circulatory system because results the side effects vary but also humpbacks the younger kids are getting humpbacks can you believe that uh they're not fully grown yet they're getting humpbacks you see that in older people too <laughs> where their bones are deteriorating and you're seeing it more in middle-aged people too because they're spending so much time on these small computing devices where your posture is terrible and forward forward shoulders that's another problem with here forward shoulders pinching in those nerves so it's not just about what exercise can I do for carpal tunnel. It's about a multifaceted thing for a multifaceted problem that Joe can have one similar situation to you as far as what their, their symptoms are, but it may not be your problem. There's a lot involved. And if you go surgery route, that's one thing. And then there's recovery from the surgery. Surgery is trauma. So in order to get your hand from stiffening up from that trauma, uh, there's inflammation from the trauma. So you ice it every 20 minutes. Your, your hand is totally wrapped for a couple days. And for the first week, you're doing all kinds of different exercises several times a day. Well, if you took those same darn two weeks and put it into preventing your problem, doing uh, even easier stuff, uh, maybe, and it's happened for thousands of people that I have, <laughs> have you could say mentored, but it's really my videos, uh, have solved their problem. People have gotten their hands back, and you could be one of them. And a good time to do it is when this virus is going on where you cannot see a doctor. They don't want to see you. Uh, what's better than my program? Let me tell you, there are hand clinics that do not have a doctor, do not have surgery, where they have physical therapists that are well aware of these muscles, uh, what's going on. They analyze you, as to, uh, they'll analyze your workstation, and they will correct your posture, and they're not cheap, but they're not invasive. They go to the root of the problem. That's the best thing. Surgery, that's expensive. You know, even if you have good insurance, generally it's out of pocket is about 3000 bucks, And it varies, of course, where you live and stuff. But why would you do that to yourself? Why? It's invasive. And it's an easy surgery compared to other surgeries. I wouldn't want to do it myself, but, but it's a very lucrative business because it only takes the doctor 15 or 20 minutes to do. And almost everybody, in fact, practically everybody, uh, has a weaker grip after surgery because when you slip that, that transverse carpal tunnel ligament, uh, that's what gives leverage to your grip. And the reason why a grip comes back after a few years is because scar tissue is built up in there to give the leverage back. Uh, why do that to yourself? What about regular physical therapy? Well, there are great physical therapists and there are not so great physical therapists. Uh, speaking from experience with people I've known and people who are clients of mine, I've had uh, people I know going not for carpal tunnel, but for other things. One person went for a, uh, their leg was numb <laughs> whenever they sat in the car for a long period of time. And I worked on him uh, 
just while we were backpacking and you know just once and I told him what to do at home and he says wow you know he called me a couple months later says wow that really worked and when I was working on him, he says you know uh, you should teach my physical therapist how to do that. And I said, your physical therapist should have known that. You had the wrong physical therapist. Another gal I worked on, uh, she just came in for a regular massage while I was doing massage. And uh, she'd been going to physical therapy for two months. And she could not... It was a shoulder problem. And I worked on her one session and her, it... it just improved her range of motion almost 100%. And not that I'm that great, it's just that that physical therapist should have known better. It was a real obvious problem to me. But you see, you're playing Russian roulette if you're not sure about the physical therapist. There's great ones out there, absolutely great, but there's, you're going to cost money. Uh, a copay will vary. You know, I'm talking about in the United States. I know there's other countries that, you know, your medical is paid for. But in the United States, uh, your copay might be $25, $35, uh, if you've got insurance, but you're coming back all the time, maybe three times a week, uh, and that adds up. People can spend hundreds, even thousands of dollars on a physical therapist, and <clears throat> when I had hurt my hip. I broke my hip and uh, had four pins put in it because I fell really hard on the ice. Uh, I went to physical therapy. My copay was $35. They billed my insurance $533. Of course, they never expected to get that money uh, because the insurance will only pay so much that it's really supposed to be. Uh, I don't know why they charge so much unless they're trying to write off funds. I don't know. $533 for one hour. That's crazy. But you can spend a lot of money with physical therapists. So, uh, like I said, a hand clinic where there's no, no surgery, where they're working on your body and stuff, that's the best way, but it's expensive. But it's certainly better than surgery because they're getting at the root of the problem. Anyway, uh, my whole point is, you can fix this at home. You don't have to go to appointments. You don't have to go anywhere. You can just watch the videos online, and I give a 60-day money-back guarantee. No surgeon's going to do that. No physical therapist is going to do that. The only time you're going to get any money back from what you paid to a physician is if there's a malpractice where they really botched you up. This is your opportunity to get your hands back to normal. And it can be done safely, easily. And it's been done for thousands of people. But you just can't watch a video and hope it works. That doesn't work. You just can't just hope. You can't let somebody try and give you pills or something. That does not work. Do something for yourself. You will not regret it. This is Helmovol, carpaltunnelmaster.com.